Hello everyone, so today I will be showing you how to organize your tracks on your doll. I used Logic Pro X and this is my laptop, okay? And um, basically I'm going to be showing you how I like to organize my tracks. These here were first in instrument tracks and basically I exported them each as audio files and then Put them back into the session which makes them all look blue like that and uh, today I'm going to show you see how they all say audio that's from each of them being exported I'm going to show you how I do it um, right now I don't have a mouse so I'm gonna be having to do this manually and it's okay because I, I like the mouse pad on the MacBook anyway, but as you see each individual track in order, you'll see how I do it. So basically I'm gonna move the mouse, uh, use my point finger to move it. And um, what I do is I, to get that right click on the mouse pad, I first use my point finger and then I'm going to right click with my middle finger which is the finger right next to your point finger right and then you can see how it gives you all these options so I'm going to go to rename track there oh, there it goes up there okay and um, this first track here is my 808 so I'm gonna go ahead and type in the weight and hit enter and boom it says 808 now the as you can see the first track it's already labeled as 808 because when I exported it as an audio file and put it back in I already named it as 808 so you'll see that now I'm just gonna click on this here right and um, I'm going to assign a track color so this is my color scale there and it allows me to color the track so that I can uh, identify it quicker. And for my 808, I'm going to use this kind of brown reddish kind of color. Because I don't know why I always use that for my 808, but that's, that's the color that I like to use right there. You see how it's different from the others. And then I'm going to, being that it's all highlighted, like you see, once... Once the track on the outside is, is clicked on, it highlights the entire track. You see that? It's pretty cool. And then this yellow thing up here, it kind of measures like where it starts and uh, where it ends. And uh, really cool. I'm just going to go and click on the box again. And boom. It just colored the whole track for me. And then I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to move on to the second one. And I'm just going to move the yellow right there, the measure. And just kind of highlighted that one. And I'm going to rename this track again by right clicking and going to rename track. And. Actually, I kind of just went to color the track <laughs> instead, but um, yeah, I'm going to highlight that and everything on that individual track is going to, hold on, one second, I'm trying to hold this phone and do this at the same time. So I'm going to click on red because I like to color my base red, as you can see, uh, There, boom, red. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just kind of try to move it along here. So this right here, it's gonna allow me to either widen the track up and down or widen the track left and right wise. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of do that because sometimes I forget what I need them. And right now, I just want to, it says Bass Drum by Ally. I'm going to rename that just because I already know it's fine, so it doesn't really matter if 
I write that it's by me. And again, I'm going to make sure everything here is highlighted. Right click. I'm just going to sign this track color really quick. And for my percussion, I like to use purple. I always use purple, by the way, for my percussion. See? And um, my bass, I always use it for red because I kind of, like, my 808 and my bass, I like to, uh, I like to mix those, meaning, when I say mix, I mean, like, level and, you know, get the frequencies right, kind of individually from the percussion, like, from the bass drums, the snares, the claps. So my percussion, like the bass, the kick, the drum, the snares, the clap, those will all be purple. And then my bass is always, like the bass line is always going to be red. Mine, that's, that's the color I like. You can, of course, use whatever color you like, but my bass is always going to be red and my 808s, I use that kind of brownish red. Just kind of quickly renaming these tracks um wait a minute mm, nah it doesn't matter so i'm just gonna kind of go ahead and delete that and leave it as bass drum enter and then i'm gonna keep going highlight everything and make sure everything's there Move this measure over. By the way, as you can see, my BPM there is 90 on this production. This specific production, it's a BPM of 90. Okay, and go and rename this one. I'm going to put kick bait base kick. Actually, yeah, I like that. I like, like that base kick. Or should I do kick bait? Mm. Don't overthink it, guys. Like how I'm doing. <laughs> Just kind of do it. Okay, enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and assign the track color. Wait, enter. Assign track color. And then I'm gonna go to purple again because again, I like everything in my percussion to be purple. See? And you're gonna, there we go, highlight the track. And you're going to see kind of how I group everything by color. And this is going to allow me to mix it and identify each thing faster. And I enjoy doing it like this. It makes, you know, it makes me feel like it's more in order and it's easier and more efficient for me. Everybody has a different workflow. And I'm just kind of sharing a little bit of mine with you guys. Purple. Of course, I go a little bit faster than this, but I am recording with my left hand and trying to capture everything as I'm going. So it's taking me a little bit longer. I'm kind of clicking on the wrong thing, but it's okay. Boom, okay. rename. Go. And this right here is a bass kicks. Uh, two because it's the same bass kick as the first but it's on a different part of the song or well, of the production I should say and so basically like when they're on when I do it on separate tracks like that it's because they have set like different levels to them I, like I did something different like one might have like a different type of reverb or you know and then the other one might have like an echo or something like that so that's kind of why you'll see that i have like a bass kick and then bass kick too because again i like to break things down i'm a little bit like uh 
let me not say that. <laughs> I like to be particular. You know, attention to details for me is very important. Here I have, this is a, a interesting one that I have. It's actually a combination of three different instruments. And here I'm gonna rename the track so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I soloed it, basically it's because it just to, to quickly remind me like what combination I have there. So when I rename the track, I kind of put it in the order of the combination that I used. And there we have a, it's a drum, snare, clap. No, wait, not drum, snare, mm. kick. drum snare okay yeah so that's my kick drum snare clap combination but i'll just put combo it just kind of makes it a little abbreviation and then i'm going to rename it on the track as well so that way i don't get confused again i can rename it on the track by clicking on the actual box there and right clicking and then rename track is the first option and I just click on it, it allows me to rename it. Boom. Very easy, very cool. Okay. Then I'm going to I'll make that purple. Boom. And call this track purple. Real quick. Boom. And then this one. I think this is a combo, but just to be sure, let me uh, just kind of zoom in on it real quick. All right, so let me rename this track kick drum snare clap combo two remember it's uh, a different part of the track so i like to uh keep them named separately so that way i know which one i'm controlling at that moment By controlling again, I mean leveling the frequencies. Okay. Okay. Purple, then the next track. So make sure the measure is all the way there. Then I'm going to zoom in on it. Okay, so this here is my snare. And it kind of has like a specific echo that I, I added to it. I kind of messed with the echo in particular. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that there's an echo, but I'm gonna put it in parentheses because I just, is, if you could see, I like to take notes as I'm going. So it's just, that's kind of like a quick reminder for me. Like all I have to do is look at it and boom, I already know. So that's that. Oh, wait a minute, I misspelled that. Yeah, I like to keep the grammar right as well. And boom, labeled, and so on and so forth. So that's just, uh, that's kind of quick. Uh, 
quick how to of how I do my coloring on my tracks and labeling my tracks. That way I can quickly identify what I'm leveling at the moment and when I listen to them, I list them by colored groups. So I'll go like and do per, per, the percussion, which is the purple section, and I'll listen to them each individually, then all together, and then I'll start going, working my way to the right. So I start, I'll show you later how uh, you'll see the colors. I start on the, the left. The ones that are quickly on the left are the ones that are, that I'm first working on, and then I keep moving on to the right. Okay. And as you can see, I have all the tracks colored and labeled, and uh, it's ready for me to mix now. The time, okay, good stuff. Okay, and then I'm just going to quickly show you guys some plugins that I like to use. I, by the way, I already mixed it, that's something that you know. I use my ears for so no point in really recording it so i like to use wave plugin i'm an avid certified engineer so uh my favorite plugins to use are my waves and uh l3 ultra maximizer is uh it's one of the it's a really good one to use i just wanted to show it to you but the one that i prefer i actually have a preference with that as well is the l1 ultra maximizer so that's the one that I'll be using to uh, to master. There we go, right there. Okay. Okay, and uh, it's looking good. Let me just stop the track really quick. I'm going to change the dither. I going to change it to none Okay, and another one that I like to use, another wave plugin. It's a really cool one to use. It's like one of uh, my secret weapons, I like to say. <laughs> it's called uh, Super Tap. You could do Super Tap with two taps or Super Tap with six taps. In this case, I'm going to be using the two tap. And uh, being that my BPM is 90, I'm going to just change the BPM here to 90. And just so you know, BPM stands for beats per minute, in case any of my listeners were unsure about what I meant by that. And uh, just going to turn that on. And for the first, for that delay, I'm going to use a high shelf. And then for the second one, I'm going to be using a high pass. So I'm going to select that, turn that on, and click there, and go to high pass. And then, uh, after, well, before I turn on my feedback, I'm going to go to the grid, and I'm going to put a triplets. So this basically kind of, um, you know, kind of manipulates the way the feedback's going to come. I want the feedback, when, it, when you hear it, it's going to come in eight triplets. And I'm going to put a little shelf on that one. And go to the second one that I added the same plug into. You see how I kind of I spaced those out a little bit more. Th these I'm going to leave right next to each other. And then on the modulation, I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to sync it to the tempo. So that way it's, everything's on time. And uh, yeah. Sounds good, sounds good. 